these are their sniper positions and they're trying to take out whoever they can see from these spots. I go on Fox News, one, so my parents can see me on TV. <laughs> it reflects all of the things that Jamaica wants to be. 50%. The chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee stepped up the fight to get a hold of six years' worth of President Trump's tax returns, issuing subpoenas to the Treasury Department and the IRS. Chairman Richard Neal has given them a week to produce the returns, but it's unlikely they'll comply, meaning the next step will be the courthouse. The Pentagon has shaken loose another $1.5 billion to spend on President Trump's border wall, bringing the total since Trump's emergency declaration to $2.5 billion. In a letter to Congress, Acting Secretary of Defense Patrick Shanahan says that reallocating the money will have minimal impact. But the biggest block is being taken from funding for the Afghan security forces, who were hit today by a Taliban attack that killed at least 15 soldiers. A Nigerian militia, backed by the government in its fight against Boko Haram, released 894 children from its ranks, including 106 girls. UNICEF says that since the Civilian Joint Task Force promised in 2017 to stop recruiting minors, it's released 1,727. It's unclear how many children have been pulled into the conflict, but according to UNICEF, non-state militias fighting Boko Haram recruited at least 3,500 children from 2013 to 2017. Uber's initial public offering may have been the biggest in five years, but investors weren't impressed. Instead of the usual IPO excitement propelling the company's stock higher on opening day, it actually fell by nearly 8%. Still, Uber did raise $8.1 billion and is now valued at more than 10 times that. Since the toppling of the dictator Muammar Gaddafi in 2011, Libya has been a country in chaos. It currently has two parallel governments, the internationally recognized government of national accord in the capital Tripoli and a second government in the east, propped up by the powerful military warlord Khalifa Haftar. Haftar launched a surprise offensive in early April to overthrow the Tripoli government. But it isn't just the threat of a military takeover that's brought these protesters to the streets. It's his international backers. Quite a few people showed up to the square today to make their anger and frustration clear towards foreign governments, particularly towards the French, hence all the yellow vests, as well as towards the Egyptians and the Emiratis for their previous support of Haftar. We don't like them. They, they, they like to kill us. They want to kill us. How did you feel just a few weeks ago when you heard that General Haftar was making a move to take over the city? When, when, when I hear it, I sent my son. <laughs> I sent him, I sent him to stop them. For this, for the, the kids. This is your daughter? Yes. yes. And why are you wearing this? She's wearing this because we want to show to the French people that his government helped Hitler. After I said Hitler, I think he's the same with Hitler. There are hundreds of militias in Libya but none as powerful as Haftar's self-declared Libyan National Army. Haftar was once a commander in Gaddafi's military. He then spent two decades in the US before returning to Libya in 2011 to help remove his old boss. Now he's convinced his allies that he's a much needed strongman in an unstable region, and that his continuing advance on the capital is a concerted effort to root out terrorists. So far, 50,000 civilians have been displaced by the fighting. 2,000 have been injured, and nearly 400 people have died. He 
جي صاروخ الاول لاطا وواحد فوق هنا Nine-year-old Mohammed bin Mansour's home is in the most densely populated neighborhood in Tripoli. His father was one of 11 people killed when rocket fire from Haftar's forces hit their street. When did you realize that your father hadn't made it? Ah, <laughs> The UN has condemned the offensive as a coup. But Haftar's initial gains highlight just how weak the central government actually is. The Prime Minister, Fayez Siraj, toured Europe this week to drum up support and try to get President Macron over to his side. This morning, he published an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, calling on President Trump to help marginalize Haftar. Do you think that your government, which is the official UN-backed government here in Libya, is doing a good job at holding this country together right now? It does seem impressive that Haftar, who is this militia leader, has been able to accumulate so much support from both within the country and from all these foreign governments like the UAE, Egypt, Saudi, France. Doesn't it suggest a general lack of faith in your own government? ولا يهمهم الشعب الليبي لو يهمهم فعلا الشعب الليبي لما لما دعموا خليفة حفتر بصواريخ ويرون خليفة حفتر يقصف كل يوم بصواريخ وطائرات يقصف المدنيين بالطائرات وبالصواريخ كل يوم يعني عشرات المدنيين يسقطون نتيجة دعم هذه الدول فهم لا هم يريدون أن يضعوا خليفة حفتر على رأس الحكم في ليبيا لكي يضمنوا أن لا لا وجود للديمقراطية في ليبيا but the fight to keep Haftar at bay isn't going great. And the government of National Accord has outsourced a lot of its fighting to militias like the Martyrs Brigade. 36-year-old Nizar al-Misrati fought in the 2011 revolution, but thought that his days at war were now behind him. Okay, There's a sniper here. The battle is hectic and the front lines are constantly shifting. This small piece of land was lost and then retaken just hours before we arrived. These are their sniper positions and they're trying to take out whoever they can see from these spots. Most of those fighting for the government are not trained soldiers, and it shows. Al-Mizrati is a civil engineer by training, but these days he's fighting with the militia full time. How up to date is your weaponry and your equipment? Yeah, I'm damn okay. Matter of fact, it's a lot of good. This is a lot of good. This is 70s. This, this, a lot of good. Oh, that sniper was very close. Yes. This is a lot of good. All a lot of good. We, this is a lot of good. 
واغلب لاحظي انت كلها خفيف how much air support do they have طيران حديد جدا طيران طياره بدون طيار لي بلا ما تمتلك طياره بدون طيار ففي سبورت في دعم من 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 جهات ثانيه دول ثانيه were you expecting to still be fighting in 2019 نهائي ابدا لكن طلعت لان اللي جاي هذا دك انسان دكتاتوري يعني احنا ما خرجنا 2011 باش نطلع انسان دكتاتوري باش تجيب لي بعد 8 سنين انسان دكتاتوري ثاني How do you feel about the state of Libya right now? شيء مزري حقيقة يعني انسان مدني المفروض نشتغل uh, عندي فيوتشر عندي طموحات عندي عندي شيء مش نقاتل في المفترض به ان الجيش التابع لحكومة وفاق هو اللي دافع واحنا مدنيين في حالنا هاول وو جاست لاند هاول مان ذات واز كلوز اوه ديد يو سي ذات؟ غير باقي هذا واحد ستين كان واحد ثمانية ولا مية وعشرين راهو هناكش احنا A modest drink. You can mock me for it. <laughs> hey, it's mock I don't judge. I don't judge. If you watch a lot of cable news, you might recognize this guy. I see you almost every morning. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nico. California Congressman Eric Swalwell is best known for his constant TV appearances attacking President Trump for his supposed ties to Russia. We have a really bad kid at the White House. Now, Swalwell's trying to use that notoriety in a bid for president. But in a field of 21 Democrats, being a cable news darling isn't enough. So he's in Iowa, trying to get his name out there to everyone else. How long did it take you to get to that point where you were comfortable in sticking out your hand and making that introduction? It's very, I would say, intimidating to say you're running for president. I mean, sure. it's like, I'm running, I'm running for president. Like, like every chance I get, I've got to introduce myself. Like, I'm not starting, you know, as Vice President Biden here. Right now, Swalwell is barely registering in the polls, getting just 1%. And as much as he likes talking about the Mueller report, Iowa voters don't. So as he traverses the state, Swalwell is pivoting to one high-profile progressive issue. We must end gun violence in America. Hard stop. He talks about guns everywhere he goes. Hello. At small house parties, he laments inaction from Congress. I came to Congress right after Sandy Hook had happened. I had hoped that I could be a part of a Congress that would actually do something about what had happened. Nothing. In meet and greets, he defends his proposal to implement universal background checks and to ban and buy back assault weapons. What happens if people don't participate? If you're caught with it, like, there's a penalty, but there's no roundup. In meetings with small town journalists, he talks about the political risks of being the gun control candidate. No other candidate's really talking about it as much as you, I don't think. You know, we're, we're promising to make it a top priority. Are you sure that's not gonna be lethal? I mean. But a lot of Iowans, like a lot of Democratic voters, care mostly about one thing, beating Trump at all costs. I've been a Democrat a long time, but I've seen a lot of wimps <laughs> in the Democratic Party. You know, and I'm being brutally yeah. honest, but I think this country is at a crossroads. I was born a Democrat, born a, a, in a, a democracy. I don't want to die in a, a dictatorship. Well said. I'm counting on all of us to make sure it's still true. Swalwell gets the urgency. So when he's not talking about guns, he's assuring voters that his coastal progressive views don't blind him to the needs of Trump voters. My parents, they're both Republicans. I was reaching across the dinner table before I ever had to reach across the aisle to work with a Republican. I passed legislation in the minority in the Congress with Republicans. I go on Fox News, one, so my parents can see me on TV. It's the only way they see me. But two, I am not going to miss an opportunity to communicate with somebody who just wants higher wages, lower health care costs, and a brighter future for their kids. What's your path to the nomination right now? How do you win? My vision is go big, be bold, do good. I'm a candidate born in Iowa, educated in the South, 
married to a Hoosier from Southern Indiana and represents a diverse district in California. I can go across the country and credibly say that I see you, I hear you, I'm for you. Why should another white guy be president? Well, a white guy who doesn't see other identities or understand other experiences should not be president. I do. Uh, and, you know, where there would be gaps in my knowledge or my experience, I will pass the mic to people, uh, you know, who do have that experience. I've, I've also pledged that I would ask a woman to serve uh, as vice president. Would you settle to be someone's vice president? Well, I'm running to be president. I see a pathway to being president, and I'll serve our country any way that it's needed, including, of course, uh, being vice president. It's an unusual admission for someone running for president, but that's often the outcome of long shot campaigns like Swatwell's. A higher profile, which may lead to a higher office. The question is, how long can a candidate like Swalwell keep up this life of running in random gyms and parenting by phone while their spouse takes care of the kids? Look at you! There will be days where I'll be on the road and she'll call me and she'll be like, are you effing kidding me? Like, you're gone for, you know, six days, seven days. Like, how are we going to do this? And, I mean, it's, it's hard. It's not, it's not easy. For now, he's still out here, cramming in four or five events a day. Hey, 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 Eric Swalwell. Attending as many meet and greets as he can and hoping he makes it to caucus day. I put this down uh, over here. How do you win when it's a house party that's 20 people here? Yeah. You just got to keep coming back and you just got to trust that you're running for the right reason and that you're going to connect and that you're showing up will be respected and then you come back again. is putting the country on red alert about climate change in a guide for local planners on how to deal with disaster debris. It gives pointers on how to clean up after hurricanes, floods, storms, fires, and volcanoes. It's an update of a publication from 2008, but while they may look the same, there are a few differences. The 2008 version mentions climate and climate change exactly zero times. This year, Climate turns up 53 times, and climate change, 26 times. Back in 2008, the EPA was still talking about potential implications of gradual warming, basically a problem for the future. Then, over the next 10 years, that future caught up with us. Between 1980 and 2017, there were $230 billion disasters. That shakes out to just over six per year, on average. But the rate hasn't held steady. In 2015, there were 10. The next year, 15. And in 2017, 16 disasters came with a billion dollar price tag. That's a lot of money, a lot of disasters, and a lot of debris. So the EPA's guide now reads less like a pamphlet for the Parks and Rec Department and more like a guidebook to the apocalypse. In 2008, for example, it said winter storms create large amounts of vegetative debris. By 2019, it's warning that winter storms are more frequent and intense. In 2008, it said hurricanes cause flooding along coastlines, fallen trees, and flying debris. This year, it's warning that, as with winter storms, hurricanes' intensity, frequency, and duration have substantially increased. It also lists intensifying droughts, fires, floods, and storm surges. Even earthquakes are, quote, becoming more frequent. But the biggest shift of all might be its advice on how to plan for the future. In 2008, that involved making predictions based on past disasters in other areas. 11 years and a 180-degree flip later, planners are being warned against relying on historical information because the past is not a reliable predictor of future conditions under a changing climate. Still, the EPA's Climate Forward Guide came as a surprise to some because under President Trump, the agencies led by this guy, coal lobbyist Andrew Wheeler. And while climate change caught up with us, he hasn't caught up with the science. Most of the threats from climate change are 50 to 75 years out. But as the EPA's former deputy administrator points out, 
not everyone at the EPA feels the same way. I think there are many professionals in EPA who work in this and realize that the facts are the facts and you have to deal with them in doing planning for real world events. Best of luck to both teams for what we know will be a very exciting match. School's Challenge Quiz is the longest running TV program in Jamaica, and this is the 50th anniversary. Bell Hippopotamus. H I B B O B O D A M U S. What is the name of the radioactive isotope of hydrogen? Tritium. Correct. And that's the end of the match. Every year, 64 high schools across the island face off in a quiz tournament for thousands of dollars in scholarships. And for some students, winning this competition means a rare opportunity to go to college. The favorite to win this year is Kingston College. They're going for their 12th trophy. Fortis can hurt sir and none for this. The brain may fall but never heal. How many chapters are there in the book of Acts? Crazy. 28. 28. Yes, literature. This is Lawarne Martin's second year on the team. Last year, he lost in the quarterfinals. He's a senior now, so this is his last shot at the trophy. How's practice going? Well, uh, practice is very intense, seeing that we're in the finals, you know, we have to make sure the preparation is enough. So as usual, practice is very intense. Mm -hmm. You seem pretty confident, though. On the KC side, we're never short of confidence. Oh. The pressure this time is different. Right here, right here. If you move. Earlier this season, Kingston College won the national soccer championships. And then they swept the national track and field competition. If they can win school's challenge quiz, they complete the triple crown of Jamaican high school competition. Uh, we're the only school that has double-digit wins. Uh, we're the only school that has won this competition in every decade of the competition. That's a legacy. Uh, yes, it is. Kingston College's competition this year is four-time quiz winner St. Jago High. They're the underdogs going into the finals. So the president of San Marino. What you see at Barty. Penalty Mama. Yes. Israel. Who played the role of Doctor Strange? Benedict Cumberbatch. In a movie, Aladdin. In the voice role of Genie. Who's me? Abigail Barnes is a junior and the newest member of the team. She specializes in movies, music. And Jamaican heritage. How did you get involved in School's Challenge Quiz? You know, I have a love for knowledge. I always want to learn new things. So quizzes where, you know, it's like a platform for learning new things every day. You think you're gonna win? Well, who wouldn't want to win? Yes, of course. St. Jago is in Spanish Town, which isn't far from Kingston, but the environment is pretty different. The economy of Spanish Town and the economic outlook of Spanish Town is not good and has not been good for quite a while. I'm Mark Clark has been coaching St. Jago's quiz team for 10 years. He competed as a student back in 1987, and he won. And thanks to the scholarship he got, he was able to go to college. What do you think winning did for you when you were here, when you were at St. Jago? It was validation of the hardware that we did as a first thing, and it was also the starting point of where you wanted to go in life. We start with Kingston College. Here's the captain, Lauren Martin. <laughs> Started with 64 teams. For them to be here, they have done very, very well, no matter what happens tonight. The final match is nationally broadcast in primetime on Television Jamaica, the biggest channel in the country. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 50th Grand Finals of TVJ School's Challenge Quiz. This is the opening challenge. Mathematics for KC, a shopkeeper, bought two dozen mangoes for a total of $2,880 and sold them back for $180 each. What was the percentage profit made? 
50%. That's right. History for St. Jacob, which politician was the founder of Italian fascism in 1915? Benito Mussolini. That's right. Spanish for KC, translate this time of day to English. La Cinco y Cuarto de la Tarde. That's right, literature, and we won't have time. St. Jago High on seven points, Kingston College just ahead on eight points. Which Old Testament prophet claimed to be a dresser of sycamore figs? That's right. Sina Kingston College is the winningest school in the competition. It will only be fitting for us to win on the 50th anniversary. So this is what we've been training for. We really want it. Hard work does indeed pay off at the end of the day. It is something they will remember for the rest of, of their lives. Complete the Jamaican proverb, kitchen dresser, Jago. That's right. French I'll be the only girl on a St. Diego High School quiz team to actually win. Yes, so we're doing an opportunity to create history for the first time. Just more than just a match. It is their life you're talking about, similar to what happened to me. Whom did Queen Elizabeth II surpass? Kingston College. And we won't have time. That is the end of the final challenge and the end of the match. Scores look to be St. Jago High on 39 points, Kingston College on 23 points. Now we invite Claire Grant to present the TVJ Schools Challenge Quiz 2019 Champions Trophy to St. Jago High. St. Jago students walked away with prizes, a trip to New York City, and college scholarships. Big up St. Diego Street. Big up. I'm an accountant and I would love to see what he is hiding on those tax returns. I have a sneaking suspicion that he probably has most of his income hiding in secret corporations that aren't passed through entities. I've been following Donald Trump since before the election. I do think there is something a little weird about him losing a billion dollars over the past 10 years. But you know, all businessmen are, are pretty shady. You know, hopefully he can repair the relationship that he has with America soon. Yep, I think that uh, we absolutely have a right to see his tax returns because if any other job requires government clearance, they look at that. I think it's unprecedented the way he's just saying, fuck you, Congress. And it's the only way we'll ever truly know how much of a crook, how horrible of a man this is.